faced off Jimmy, misses three games, comes back, plays 37 minutes, gets a triple-double. How, how much did he kind of settle you guys, especially there in the second quarter when things weren't going well for you? Yeah, we obviously we're not def, we were not defending in the first uh, quarter you know, the way we we're capable of, and that's not taking any, anything away from them. They, they came out sharp and they scrambled us and knocked down a bunch of threes at the, at the beginning. Um, that kind of sped us up offensively. Um, and so we weren't getting to coherent triggers or actions. Uh, um, and then in the second quarter, we just simplified it. The ball was just hitting Jimmy's mitts, and then we were playing off of, of him. And a lot of them were just either at the elbow um, or in the post um, or on a dribble out. Um, and it just kind of settled us. That's what great players do. Uh, and then we defended better, you know, much better in the second quarter and then obviously in the, in the second half. A couple of questions on a couple of guys. Um, you always talk about ignitable players, and eventually they ignite. So when Tyler started the way he started, did you figure it was only a matter of time till he was going to warm up and then throw one in from half court? Yeah, you know, uh, you know, we were just really off in that first quarter. Like I said, it, um, because we weren't defending, uh, everything just kind of sped up. The ball was not going where it needed it to go, and so everybody was out of rhythm. Uh, and, um, you know, Tyler, I think just, you know, let the game come to him a little bit more. Guys were finding him, got a couple uh, easy ones, uh, and then just got into a great flow from there. Um, we didn't have much of that, you know, in, in, in that first quarter. Um, but, you know, he's ignitable. We have a lot of guys that are ignitable. Um, and then, you know, UD gives you that emotional ignitability, uh, and, and that's tangible. Uh, but you can't put an analytic to it. Uh, but he gave us a, a great emotional spark, made some plays. You know, of course, he's going to take a, a hit, um, but the block and then, you know, running the floor, uh, all of that, you could just feel it lift up, you know, our team, um, which was great to see. I, you know, I've seen that so many times, uh, that emotional lift, uh, but that's an ignitability as well. How much was that challenge emotional on your part that, it's UD, so you you use your yeah all the above. Like probably with UD, you know, I don't like burning those, you know, early in the game. That was in the second half, but you know, if he takes a hit like that in the first half, just out of respect, even if I lose one, you know, I'm probably going to do it. I have that much respect for him. But I also saw it, you know, um, he was there early, uh, put himself in front, he took it right on the numbers. Um, you know, I don't, I don't think the, the, the players would have let me in the locker room if I didn't challenge that one. Eric, what last year you didn't use Udonis until the very end in those famous couple of minutes. What, what's been the difference this year? Is there anything about him? I mean, is he in better shape? Is it just rotationally? Is, was there a decision made that he was going to play more this year, perhaps? Or? Um, you know, that's one of the things that, that we looked at. You know, last year during the summer, I mean, we, we, we spent a lot of time. It felt like we had a, a super long off season, um, but in those situational minutes, um, you know, out of reflection, it was like, I don't trust anybody more than UD. You know, why not? Like in the first half, that's what that was, was just a, a situational, you know, less than two minutes. Um, well, you can trust him. You can you can trust him to execute offense to do his job defensively, and he's going to he's just going to kind of settle everything. Uh, and then the second thing is, you know, this year this team is a, a little bit more of a veteran team, and I, I think it just fits, you know, for those those kind of spot minutes. He he's he's right in his element. Those guys they all speak the same language, um, and and again when you when you look at it, the emotional. Um, lift that that he can bring you know this group uh, is pretty evident this is one of those things that's kind of hard to prove on paper but does it feel at all to you like jimmy is more ruthless this year as far as hunting mismatches and chasing those switches and if either way how much does your direction from the sideline have to do with him going after those matchups um you know i think there are a lot of different factors uh there um you know he's he's just in in great shape, and he's really you know prepared this season like none of us were able to really prepare last year with the, with the quick turnaround. Um, he really had some time to to rest, recover, and then you know 
really put in the time, which he did. Uh, and then adding Kyle, which a lot of these, you know, pitches were just happening right from the first day of, of training camp. Um, and then so we just tried to 10x that, you know, as much as possible. And then, uh, um, yeah, we're just, you know, trying to get to our strengths as, as much as possible. Um, and he can get it early uh, in the clock or, you know, if, if there's a switchable matchup, then he's just, you know, really, really smart of being able to manipulate the defense when he gets that kind of matchup and he can get to where he wants to go because it's not just about scoring. It, he can draw fouls, but he'll he'll make the, the right play. Um, even if he just hit two buckets, if there's somebody open, um, he'll make you pay for that. Hey, Spo. So P.J. Tucker, obviously, is somebody who's already known for the defensive pedigree, what he brings as an offensive and defensive rebounder. You guys have been getting uh, this offensive production from him. Obviously, he gives you 13 points tonight on six of seven. That's not something he's usually known for, but he's been really hitting on those floaters. He works on them pregame. Yeah. How do you feel? I know you love P.J., but how do you feel about just that aspect of what he's bringing on the floor? I, I love just getting to know him um, and being open, you know, to where uh, his game and um, how he can impact this team, where that can grow. Um, you know, was, we talk so much about his his offensive versatility, but his IQ, his mind, and his, his experience for the game offensively also is, um, you know, superior. Um, he's he just does a lot of little things, intangible things. We have an unselfish group, so he's he's, you know, arguably our best screener, one of the best in in, in this game. And our guys are, are feeding him, you know, rewarding him for those screens. Uh, um, and he has a lot of versatility. He's a really underrated passer, playmaker, you know, finisher when, when he gets into into those spaces. And, you know, I've, I've said a lot, obviously, about his, his screening ability. But I, I'm really enjoying just he's teaching us a lot about screening, particularly off-ball screening. It's, he's really unique, really creative, and really smart. All right, Coach, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.